All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Is the mic? Is the, is the mic on? Oops, no. It's on. Okay. All right, guests, welcome. We're about ready to kick off Convocation 2023. Uh, it's great to see you all here. Uh, I do have a few housekeeping announcements to make just before we get started. Uh, my name is Kevin Bird. I'm the registrar for the university. Uh, we just got noticed that the BC emergency alert system is going to go off at 1.55 p.m. today. Uh, this is actually going to happen. <laughs> we at first thought it might have been a joke, but it's not. So um, that probably would be right in the middle of uh, one of our speeches. Uh, so if you could um, turn your phones off, mute them. I don't know if that will actually mute it. It may still come through, uh, but we, are, we all need to be prepared for that. So at 1.55, and with the acoustics in this room, <laughs> it could be quite loud, so uh, just be prepared for that. Um, so the other thing, uh, uh, when uh, the, the students are getting prepared to be processioned in first, and they will be at the front of their uh, their procession will be our drummer, and you will hear him. And if we could all stand as, as the students come in and remain standing. Once the students are in, they will go into these various rows. And then the, um, the, the platform party, which, which includes the president and the chancellor of the university, the senate, the faculty, and so on, they follow right after the students. So remain standing. And as everybody um, kind of processions in, uh, that group will come up here on the stage and, and we, won't be, we won't take our seats again until the Chancellor directs us to do so. Or, or the uh, MC, who will be the academic provost, uh, uh, asks us to be seated. So if we're all ready, I'll give the cue to the students to begin the procession into, into the auditorium. And thank you again.
Quinn and also Emily Carr. <laughs> Thank you, Alacton. I would like to now introduce the VP Academic, Dr. Trish Kelly. I think Kevin forgot my name there for a minute. Um, <laughs> welcome, everyone. Um, I'll be the MC for today's um, ceremonies. And um, as we begin, I mean, first I just want to give my congratulations to the graduating class. It's, I'm super happy to be here in support of all of you and super proud of the work that you've accomplished. Um, as we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that we are visitors on the unceded traditional ancestral territories of the Musqueam peoples here at UBC. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge that Emily Carr University is situated on the unceded traditional and ancestral territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh peoples. Everyone can now be seated. So, to begin, so to begin, I would like to um, introduce our chancellor, Carlene Thomas, and Carlene is going to come up and um, uh, uh, start us off here. Thank you, Carlene. Thank you, Trish. Good afternoon. It is an honor to join you here today to celebrate Emily Carr University's extraordinary class of 2023. It is easy to find oneself caught in the haste and hurry of such a moment. In recent weeks, you have sped through completing your courses, writing your exams, and preparing your work for the show, all while thinking about what comes next. But this is a moment for slow, intentional reflection. It is a moment to step out of the haste and hurry and bear witness to all that you have accomplished that has brought you here today. Today's ceremony is a culmination of millions of moments from your time at Emily Carr. The learning experiences, the triumphs and disappointments, the friendships and the communities you formed, they all live within you and have shaped the person you have become. The many paths you have walked during your time at Emily Carr have led you to this destination. Today, you are a graduate. I encourage you to sit with how that feels. I hope you feel the energy of all those who came before you, they're cheering you on as you prepare to share your gifts with the world. I also hope that you see all the people in this room today who believe in you, who support you, and who lift you up in the spirit of celebration. Emily Carr is your community now and, and is, is your community now and always. Yes, today you will earn a prestigious degree but you leave Emily Carr with so much more. Your creative practice, your friendships and communities, these are the guideposts that will usher you forward as you begin this next chapter of life. I raise my hands to all the graduates who make up Emily Carr University's class of 2023. May you continue to shine brightly as you collect moments of greatness over the course of your fertile and fascinating lives Thank you. I would like to now call upon President and Vice Chancellor of Emily Carr University, Dr. Jillian Seidel, who will deliver the presidential address. Thank you, Chancellor Thomas. Uh, it's so wonderful to see you all here today uh, for this very special ceremony and very special occasion. Uh, my name is Gillian Sidall, and I am the President and Vice Chancellor of Emily Carr University of Art and Design. And I'd like to begin by congratulating the class of 2023 on your incredible achievement.
Some of you may know that this is the last convocation over which I will preside as ECU's president, and I do so from a place of distinct optimism. At its essence, a convocation ceremony celebrates a history defined by dreams. Your dreams are what brought you here today. This is an extraordinary thing, no less extraordinary for the enormous challenges you all overcame to get here today. Not only have you completed four years of an amazing educational journey, but you did so under conditions that were literally unthinkable when you first walked through the doors of Emily Carr. You adapted to every new requirement, every new reality of a social world that changed sometimes by the hour. And you went through it all with grace, composure, and without sacrificing one iota of your aspirations. Nor did you fail to contribute in myriad ways to shaping the future of this institution. We gather today to celebrate you, not because you allowed the present to define you, but because you refused to do so. We celebrate you today because of your clear-eyed sense of purpose, because you persevered, and you persevered together. History reveals more than dreams. The history of a community speaks to the values that sustain it. Yours speaks of courage, decency, dignity, collaboration, and justice. But celebrating your character and your accomplishments is only one part of why we're here today. A convocation is not only a conclusion, it's also a new beginning. You will walk from this room today with new horizons rolling out before you. You will be tasked with finding ways to apply all you've learned in new contexts, some of which we can't even imagine right now, and to new effect. That might feel daunting. Our world stands at an inflection point. The choices we make today will have monumental impact within our lifetimes. But I have no doubt you are equal to any challenge you decide to take on. If the magnitude of the resilience you've already shown has faded for you, let me remind you as you sit here today, having faced things few people in living memory have faced. The connections you forged while doing so are invaluable. Cherish those relationships, nourish them. They will sustain you and your practice. You are now among the leaders of this community you've helped to build. The generations behind you will look to you in this regard. Your integrity, your determination, and your depth will be their great asset. I began this address by saying I appear before you with optimism in my heart. These qualities of character are the reason. I am optimistic not only because I've seen what you've done, but because I know what you can and will do. So again, my congratulations to you, class of 2023. Today we celebrate not only a history defined by your dreams, but a future that will be too. Thank you. So just one bit of housekeeping before we proceed. I think um, most everyone's already been made aware that the BC emergency alert will be going off in, I think, about a minute. So if you haven't silenced or shut off your cell phone, we're all going to hear a really loud ring. So I just wanted to give everyone an opportunity one more time to, to take care of that before we proceed. Should we wait? We should, we'll just wait. So it's 1.50. It's 1.55. Oh, I think then we can start. No. Do you think it's gone on? Yeah. I think we're going to say it. Yeah, maybe we, we don't know. Okay. Um, so we're going to um, begin by inviting um, Chancellor Carlene Thomas. Oh, there we go. We knew we were going to get one. So we'll, just one second, Carlene. Okay. Well, I think, it's, I think it's good news it's working. We all want that to be working, so there we go. 
All right, I'd like to invite Chancellor Carleen Thomas, who will now begin the presentation of the honorary degrees. Honorary degrees are the highest awards confirmed, conferred by Emily Carr University. They recognize and celebrate the commitment, dedication, and service of individuals who have distinguished themselves by their significant achievements and contributions to the art world in BC, Canada, and beyond. I will now call on President Seidel to present the first honorary degree to Glenn Lewis. Thank you, Chancellor Thomas. Glenn Lewis was born in Chimanus, British Columbia in 1935. He studied at the Vancouver School of Art, graduating with an honors degree in painting, drawing, and ceramics in 1958. He then attended the University of British Columbia and earned a teaching degree in 1959. He continued his studies under Bernard Leach, the artist potter in Cornwall, England from 1961 to 1963. Along with John Reeve and Warren Mackenzie, he founded a pottery in 1964, Longlands and Hennock, Devon, and in the same year, left to teach ceramics in the education faculty uh, in from 1964 to 1967, and with the Fine Arts Department, 1971 to 1974, at the University of British Columbia, with a break as a visiting professor in 1970 to 71 to teach in undergraduate and master's programs in the College of Ceramics, Alfred University in Alfred, New York. Although an intensely important part of his artistic repertoire, his work with traditional pottery was replaced with an interest in the progressive avant-garde in the 1960s with conceptual and performance art. Always questioning the dialectic between conventional objects and art, social obligation and natural instinct function and wonder, his past experience with sculpture played an important role in his new projects, attempting to reunite art and craft that the ancient Greeks called techne because they didn't have a term for art. Much of his work between the 1960s and 80s included some aspect of sculpture or positioning as a questioning of the dichotomy between the static and the transient. He was fascinated with seeking commonality and human links revealed by the conventional items and popular myth. He worked with photography, film, and even horticulture, becoming increasingly interested in nature, particularly topiary. He was involved in a number of artist collectives and artist-run centers, which included Intermedia, the New Era Social Club in 1968, and the Western Front in 1973 as one of its founders. Many of his works were collaborative and included members of these collectives, often questioning the perception of reality by a public manipulated by the media. New, be new media in all types became the catalyst for much of his work through the 80s, an investigation into its power to influence and broadcast and yet limit perception at the same time. He was awarded with five Canada Council grants throughout this period. His attention to new media eventually led to his appointment as head of media arts at the Canada Council from 1987 to 1990. From 1993 to 2006, he built a plant nursery called Fragrant Flora on the Sunshine Coast and founded the Sunshine Coast Botanical Garden. All of this was an outgrowth of his photography and gardens around the world based on his research of the ele elements inherent in paradise myths. He was awarded the Emily Award from the Emily Carr Institute of Art and Design in 2000 and received the Governor General's Award for Visual Arts in 2017. An innovative, first-generation, conceptual, mixed-media artist, Lewis has worked with pottery, sculpture, performance, correspondence, photographs, video, and installation since the early 1960s. The scope and intellectual pursuits of his work range across concept, fiction, myth, and community concerns. He was one of the earliest innovators in performance art with Flower Piece in 1968, at the uh, Vancouver Art Gallery and video performances, Japanese pickle and blue tape around the city, around city block, both in 1969. Now, in 2023, he made a body of work, ceramic things used in photographs of still life that both speak to a history of painting and the actual things in still life. Chancellor Thomas, 
on behalf of the Senate of this university, I now ask that you confer upon Glenn Lewis the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa. Glenn Lewis, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of Emily Carr University, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Letters Honorarius Causa, Dr. Glenn Lewis will be hooded by Dr. Trish Kelly, Vice President, Academic and Provost. Thank you very much. Greetings. President Dr. Sadal, the Board and Senate, faculty and staff of Emily Carr University of Art and Design, graduates, students and friends, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm deeply grateful to be here today to receive this honorary doctorate from this institution. In 1958, I graduated from the Vancouver School of Art, the direct ancestor of this university. So this time span gives me a certain creative overview, I think. In those early days, we were taught drawing, painting, sculpture, ceramics, and commercial design, with an emphasis on drawing in a traditional method from live models, from a skeleton, from plaster casts and drapery, from plants, trees, and landscape in nature. Now I make performance, ceramics, photographs, and installations. Traditional methods are valuable because they teach you how to see, especially in drawing and ceramics. Repetition in practice reveals slight differences in form, the gradations between light and shade, and the in-between, permitting discriminations between each training the connection of eye and hand. This practice over time generates tacit knowledge, the way things are made intuitively. In ancient Greek, this was called techne. They didn't have a word for art, even though their techne produced the sculpture, painting, and ceramics that later became the canon and basis of Western art. Fine art arrived in the 18th century through the philosophy of Baumgarten and Kant with their invention of the theory of aesthetics, the study of beauty, which was the basis for making reasoned, formal fine art painting and sculpture. In this educated upper class colonial thinking, useful crafts were hived off to the common folk. And because they were not educated, it was therefore thought that common people could not appreciate beauty. Until recently, this division between craft and art was maintained. Now that we have universal education, it would seem that this class division between fine art and craft would no longer be operative. I'm working to reunite, reunite art and craft as techne with our contemporary life and world as a more authentic, relevant, and stronger practice for our turbulent times. I should also mention that this idea of techne is not really radical. It just has not been identified as what is already going on in many places under different names and practices. Notably, it's the practice of most of the world outside of the Western canon in Aboriginal and Indigenous practices, in most Asian cultures, and indeed in some postmodern and contemporary practices. 
One could say that art is a rendering of techne as poetical thinking and making a poesis, a bringing into being, a revealing of the truth of something not existing before that opens a world through the work, poetically knowing it, disclosing it, naming it. This includes lots of creative people, hobbyists, amateurs, craft persons, artists, gardeners, chefs, etc., in an egalitarian, decolonized community. The intention of the creators is dependent on the framing or purpose of the work, not whether it is high or low art or craft. In Japan, for instance, the wrapping of a parcel can be a work of art, embodied as part of everyday life. I'm not saying that the students of Emily Carr should spend years studying parcel wrapping, although I've heard that sushi chefs study their art for 10 years, three years making rice and sushi making for eight years before beginning their practice. But graduates should realize that their learning process is ongoing, a lifelong journey discovering your relation to the earth and world in a reciprocal eye-opening perception. Thank you. Congratulations, Dr. Lewis. President Sedell, will you please present the second honorary degree to Paul Wong? Thank you, Chancellor Thomas. Paul Wong is a media maestro making art for site specific spaces and screens of all sizes. Sorry, let me, I'm going to start that again because I didn't read that very well. Paul Wong is a media maestro making art for site-specific spaces and screens of all sizes. He is an award-winning artist and curator known for pioneering early visual and media art in Canada, founding several artist-run groups and organizing events, festivals, conferences, and public interventions since the 1970s. Paul has produced projects throughout North America, Europe, and Asia. Now in his 40th year as a creator of events, performances, videos, pictures, sculptures, and cultural institutions, Paul has made himself a virtual intersection of activities, both solo and collaborative, affirmative and critical, stoic and ludic. Paul was the winner of the Bell Canada Award in Video Art in 1992, the first recipient of the Transforming Art Award from the Asian Heritage Foundation in 2002, and the inaugural winner of the Trailblazer Expressions Award in 2003, created by Heritage Canada, National Film Board, and Chum Limited. In 2005, he received the Governor General's Award in Visual and Media Art. In 2008, he was awarded Best Canadian Film or Video at the Toronto Real Asian International Film Festival. In 2016, he was awarded the Odeon Prize for Lifetime Achievement in Visual Arts. Paul recently completed the multi-year interdisciplinary project called Occupying Chinatown. Inspired by hundreds of letters and familiar artifacts, familial artifacts of his late mother, Suk Fang Wang, Paul Wong created intimate exhibitions, public art pieces, artist talks, events, workshops, and a website called Occupying Chinatown. Occupying Chinatown was a public art project commissioned by the City of Vancouver Public Art Program in partnership with the Dr. Sun Yat-sen Classical Chinese Garden. The Occupying Chinatown book was a finalist for the 2022 City of Vancouver Book Award. Uh, now in its 50th year, uh, the Satellite Video Exchange Society um, was co-founded by Paul. For the first 25 years, he was a driving force involved in making this a vibrant and important centre pioneering video art in Canada. He is the artistic director and curator of On Main Gallery on the Cutting Edge Productions Society. Established in 1986, Paul has facilitated hundreds of arts, artists' projects, most recently as the producer and artistic director of the Pride in Chinatown Festival 2018 to 2022. This annual event focuses and claims and makes a safe space for Pan-Asian queer communities to come together and celebrate being out loud and proud in Chinatown. 
Chancellor Thomas, on behalf of the Senate of this university, I now ask that you confer upon Paul Wong the degree of Doctor of Letters Honoris Causa. Paul Wong, by the virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of Emily Carr University, I hereby admit you to the degree of Doctor of Letters on Honoris Causa. Dr. Wong will be hooded by Dr. Trish Kelly, Vice President, Academic and Provost. I needed that drink, thank you. Um, wow, good afternoon everybody. <laughs> Excited to be here. Uh, uh, President Siddo, esteemed members of the board, graduating students, staff, faculty, my family and colleagues, thank you for inviting me to be here today and for awarding me this honor and thank you Henry Jung for the nomination. What makes this day extra special is to be able to share this honor with Dr. Glenn Lewis. You are an artist who I have admired and respected from when I first came onto the scene in the early 1970s. Thank you, Glenn, for shining a light. I grew up on Main Street in East Vancouver and never had the opportunity to go to college or university. So this honorary degree is meaningful to me in ways I can scarcely find words for. I am humbled by this recognition. It is fitting that this first honorary degree should come from Emily Carr. Although I was never a student here, over many decades I have been a guest lecturer, I have mentored, employed, and have collaborated with dozens of grads. More recently, as an MFA thesis external reviewer and a mentor for the Sumka Center's Art Apprenticeship Network. Many of my best friends and favorite artists are all graduates. All of you have worked hard to get to this day. I'm thrilled to be sharing this moment with you and one of my best friends, Claudia Fernandez, who has taken 15 extraordinary years to formally get her Bachelor of Fine Arts degree is here today. Congratulations, everyone. <laughs> Many years ago, when I was in high school, I wrote an essay about a famous painting. That painting was Guernica's by Picasso. This was, my way, this was way before the internet. And had, I had not seen the painting in real life. It existed only as a small image in a book, but it touched me. And when I graduated, I was lucky enough to travel to New York City, where I saw it in real life at the Museum of Modern Art. I was not much younger than some of you when I first stood in front of that stunning, newspaper-toned masterpiece, and something inside me broke open. In fact, I often think that this experience at that moment understood I wanted to be an artist. Guernica has since moved to its permanent home in Spain. And just days ago, 50 years after I had first seen it, I was given the chance to see it again for the first time since I was a teenager. In fact, I just returned from Spain where I would likely still be had I not been surprised by a wonderful phone call from President Sidal asking whether I would accept this great honor. For those of you, of you who know my work, it might sound strange that a Picasso painting was what set me on the path I've been walking this past half century. I make videos, I make projections, I make events, I make experiences and I do so with the aim of reflecting the world back at, its, at itself, 
of exploring the beauty and adversity of the everyday. But looking at that painting revealed something to me. It brought me to a place I'd never been before. It stood me toe to toe with the anguish and fear of people I've never met. It showed me their hope and courage, and it convinced me that their pain and their promise was real. And Guernica does all those things without moralizing. It holds its grandiose themes in a poignant ambiguity. This is the mark of a great work of art, ambiguity. It doesn't tell you how to feel. It doesn't shame you for not doing more, but does bring its reality to your very doorstep. It makes that reality impossible to ignore, and it does all of this through an indelible aesthetic experience, art. And I'd like to remind our graduating students here today that you needn't travel to a foreign country and see a masterwork to have this experience. Guernica was a spark, but the flame that I conjured, that I've tended now for half a century, has been fed by what I have found in my own backyard here. This is something I've said before, but truly, community has been my mentor. Community has been my greatest and most enduring source of inspiration throughout my career. The people and places and, and events that happen right here in Vancouver have fed my curiosity, and never once has it gone hungry. Each of us gets involved in creative practice for unique reasons. Some of, some of us dream of traveling to far-flung places and will do so, but if that's not what you hope to do, it doesn't make your dreams or your practice any less profound. The world by which we are surrounded is richer than our wildest imaginings. All of what, is mean, what, all of, of what it means to be human. Struggle, triumph, agony, love, happiness, darkness, light, sound, is everywhere you look. All that matters is you keep looking, keep working, and I promise that work will reward you. After 50 years, this much I know to be true. Thank you for this great honor. Congratulations, Dr. Wong. The Emily Award recognizes outstanding achievements by members of the alumni community whose creative pursuits in the arts, media, and design have brought honor to Emily Carr University. President Sadal, will you please present the Emily Award? Thank you, Chancellor Thomas. Zadie Cha draws upon her own background to inform an ongoing engagement with hybrid and diasporic identities, global histories and folklore, as well as spiritual and religious rituals. She creates installations that incorporate painting, sculpture, textile, sound, and performance. Her art seeks to elevate narratives that, that have been erased and repressed by the West and occupying powers. For her, art is a means to analyze socio-political conditions and cultural behaviors through a lens of masquerade, play, costuming, and storytelling. Zadie's practice is highly collaborative, and she has developed ongoing exchanges with dancers and musicians. Since 2006, she has worked closely with artist Benito Mayer Vallejo. Together, they have staged live performance, moving images, and installations. Zadie earned an MA in painting at the Royal College of Art in 2014 and a BFA at the Emily Carr Institute of Art and Design in 2007. Recent solo exhibitions include the Whitechapel Gallery 2023, the Box Plymouth 2022, Leeds Art Gallery 2021, and Remain Modern 2020. Group exhibitions and performances include the Deus Ropax Soul, uh, 2023, Copenhagen Contemporary 2023, Hauser and Worth Somerset 2023, Jeju Binale 2023, Somerset House 2023, Jessica Silverman Gallery San Francisco 2022. It's an impressive list. Uh, Institute of Contemporary Art Los Angeles 2022, Jeffrey Deitch Gallery 2022, Blind Spot Gallery in Hong Kong, Hauser and Worth in Los Angeles, National Gallery 
uh, Castello de Rivoli, Haus der Kunst, Shanghai Biennale in uh, 2021, Freeze London in 2020, uh, the Art Gallery of Ontario in Toronto in 2020, Art Night in 2020, Venice Biennale in 2019, the Hayward Gallery in 2018, and Serpentine Galleries 2018 and 2017. Zadie lives and works in London, England. Emily Carr University of Art and Design is pleased to present Zadie Cha with this year's Emily Award. everyone. Um, I'm a little bit nervous. I didn't remember it being so big with so many people. I'm just going to have a, a sip of water before I start. Okay. Um, thank you so much, President Sadal and Chancellor Thomas. I'm deeply um, humbled to be here. And um, I tend to talk a lot, so I've written a script. I don't normally read. I try to kind of connect with the folks I'm speaking with, but for the sake of brevity, I'm just gonna read off the paper today. So, good afternoon, friends, family, distinguished faculty, and of course, the graduating class of 2023. It is a genuine pleasure and honor to stand here alongside you all to celebrate this hard-earned achievement. <laughs> it's been 16 years since I, too, once sat here, nervously awaiting for my turn to walk down across the stage to receive my undergraduate degree. And as I stand here with you today, I am reminded of the early days of my artistic practice being full of fun, excitement, late night studio sessions, creative frustrations, breakthroughs, and breakdowns. But most importantly, I remember the deep relations and friendships that were forged during this time. Alongside my studies at Emily Carr, as you know, I also hold an MA from the Royal College of Art in London, where I have lived and worked for the past 11 years. And while I am wholeheartedly indebted to the openness and generosity of the UK arts community, I've always affirmed that it was my time at Emily Carr that laid the foundations for who I have become as an artist and is very likely the bedrock from where so much of my tenacity as a cultural worker stems from. The critical thinking skills and intellectual rigor, which is widely associated with ECU graduates, is something I too inherited and am fiercely proud of. I'm very fortunate to have shared space with brilliant artists and professors like Dr. Rajdeep Gill, whose teachings had a profound and meaningful impact on me as a person, as well as the very excellent Elizabeth McIntosh, whose endorsement of me as an artist with heaps of potential, her words, <laughs> no doubt helped me secure an interview for grad school. <clears throat> Each time I reach a new milestone in my life, whether it be professional or personal, I am reminded of the significant positive impact family relations, collaboration, and artistic kinship has had on me. This is particularly felt when I reflect on my relationship with my mother, who not only supported me on her own, but has also helped me to create some work, making appearances as a voice actor in two of my most important sound installations. Another artistic relation I am indebted to is with fellow artist Benito Mayor Vallejo, whom I studied with at Emily Carr in 2006 while he was on an exchange from Spain. He has since become my life partner and is a key artistic collaborator who has supported me in the production of my work for the past 15 years in every major and minor presentation, including my BFA degree piece for Emily Carr. <laughs> It is through these relationships with artists and curators, almost all of which I've met through a network of school alumni, both here and in London, which has led the way for opportunity and timing to meet me favorably time and time again. In 2019, I had my first Canadian solo exhibition, which was the result of an invitation from curator Rose Boutelier. Rose also attended Emily Carr and graduated from photography in 2007. And while we weren't close while we were together at school, it was this link that made our eventual collaboration so special for me. 
To be given this opportunity and to be seen by someone whom I studied with so many years before was deeply meaningful. Now it's really important for me to drive home the point that in no way was I ever the class star or singled out as someone who was going to make it, not here or at Royal College. To be honest, it's pretty amazing to me that I'm standing here speaking to you and receiving this award. However, I was and I still am an incredibly driven person who's also had the great fortune of benefiting from a, from a network of stellar, like-minded friends and colleagues who believe in lifting each other up. I truly believe that the folks you have around you and the mutual support given to one another is the keystone to the longevity as an artist. Most of us are familiar with the romantic, mythologized narrative of singular artistic genius the lone artists hold up in their studio, doing it all by themselves. I'm not convinced. Instead, I'm here to speak in favor of long-term, fulfilling artistic practices, which bring joy and transformational change, built upon stone by stone through working together. I recently came across an interview with American writer, producer, and actor Issa Rae, where she speaks candidly about networking, and the misguided tendency to try and network upwards. Instead, she suggests we should be networking horizontally. That is to say, who's around you? Who's sitting across from you? Who's out there in the trenches with you, grinding? It's those folks you want to reach out to and build with. The professional acknowledgments and achievements I have been so lucky to encounter are due only in part to an unyielding self-determination. Ultimately, these possibilities have been the result of someone I know, usually other artists and curators, speaking my name in rooms full of opportunity and advocating on behalf of my practice. And so with that, I'd like to once again thank you for allowing me to share this space and to congratulate you on this hard-won achievement, of which there will be many more. And remember, once you have a foothold in, please be sure to hold the door open for those coming up alongside and behind you. Thank you. Thank you, Zadie. The Governor General's Gold Medal, established in 1873, is one of the most prestigious awards that can be received by a student in a Canadian educational institution for exceptional academic achievement. The Governor General Gold Medal is awarded to the student who achieves the highest academic standing from a master's degree program upon graduation. On behalf of Their Excellency, the Right Honorable Mary Simon, Governor General of Canada, I am pleased to present the academic medal to Jessica Bonin. Jessica is not able to attend our ceremony today. On behalf of Emily Carr University, I accept this award and congratulate her on this wonderful achievement. <laughs> the Governor General Silver Medal is awarded to the student who achieves the highest academic standing upon graduation from a, bachelor degrees pro a bachelor's degree program. I am pleased to present the academic medal to Azeda Merar. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. Azeda, please come up and receive your award. The Lieutenant Governor's Medal Program was created to recognize students who excel in their studies and contribute to the life of their institution and community. 
For nearly 40 years, British Columbia's Lieutenant Governor has awarded the medal to outstanding students who have distinguished themselves through their post-secondary education. The Lieutenant Governor's Medal is a prestigious badge of recognition for recipients granted for outstanding contributions in support of inclusion, democracy, and or reconciliation. On behalf of Honourable Janet Austin, British Columbia's Lieutenant Governor, I am pleased to announce this year's winner of the Lieutenant Governor's Medal is Kashish Huka Jani. I would now like to call on Vice President Academic and Provost Dr. Trish Kelly to introduce our graduate student speakers. I'm honored to introduce the 2023 graduate student speakers, Leah Nadir Contractor and Julia de Oliveira Farba. Leah Nadir Contractor graduated from the Indus Valley School of Art and Architecture in 2017 with a distinction in communication design. She was awarded the prestigious Founders Award along with the Aga Hassan Abidi Award for demonstrating a high level of compassion, humility, and generosity. She worked as an editorial designer for the Dawn Media Group in Pakistan prior to moving to Canada for her postgraduate degree. Today, she will be graduating with a Master of Design. At Emily Carr, she worked as a research assistant on multiple projects with our faculty, ranging from publication design to website and exhibition design, and was a teaching assistant for both undergraduate and graduate classes. She was also elected graduate representative for the Emily Carr Students Union. Leah has always been curious about design's role in amplifying endangered cultures, particularly her own. As such, the themes of culture, identity, and storytelling drive her practice. Her graduate thesis project, Reimagining Rituals, takes the form of an app, which acts as a guide and an invitation for the Parsi community to connect more profoundly to one another through the practice of their cultural rituals and to share their knowledge with other Parsis across the world. Julia de Oliveira Baba graduated in 2021, summa cum laude, with a Bachelor of Arts in Visual Communication and in Global and International Studies from Loyola University, Loyola University, Chicago. Today, she will be graduating with a Master of Design. At Emily Carr, she worked as a research assistant on multiple projects, including publication design and literature research. She was hired as a teaching fellow, increasing her interest in expanding her practice into teaching, and was accepted as part of the Curriculum Planning and Review Senate Subcommittee as the graduate student representative. She is a Brazilian interdisciplinary designer whose current practice consists of printmaking, embroidery, and editorial design. Her research takes on a phenomenological approach and focuses on understanding and addressing climate crisis evoked emotions through a creative practice and how the art of making can help us navigate those effects. Chancellor Thomas, I now call upon this year's graduate studies speakers, Leah Nadir Contractor and Julia de Olivia Barber to address convocation.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Trish, for the wonderful introduction. We would like to start by saying a big congratulations to everyone graduating today. While we see how two people giving this speech might seem unusual, both Julia and I are extremely honored and humbled by the graduating, sorry, that the graduating master's cohort of 2023 trusted us to represent them here today. And like most things over the past two years, we love that we can do this together. Our experience has been remarkable. We started this journey with only a few of us present, physically present in Vancouver, while the rest of us trickled in over the coming months. From Pakistan to Brazil and so many countries in between, we brought our unique perspectives to this program. Over time, we began to learn more about each other and about the world through each other's eyes. Even though some of us came into the program knowing our research space and some of us were still looking for it, none of us could really imagine the incredible journey these past two years would take us on and how much our research would grow and we would grow with it. Time and time again, we were told to trust the process and so we had to learn to let go, we had to learn to explore, we had to learn to relearn, to only then learn how to work the process and allow our research to guide us instead. Being a master's student puts us in an incredibly unique position as each of us comes from different academic and professional backgrounds. Some of us came directly from undergrad, some had years of design industry experience, and some were artists that have been working in the field for a while. What we had in common was that we were all in, a, in search of expanding our practices through this program together. Even though the master's program may seem to be very individualistic as we focus on our own projects, what emerged was a group that kept motivating and pushing each other to do better. We learned from each other and came together to discuss, discuss each topic in a deep and meaningful way. Without these conversations and the constant feedback they generated, our research would not have evolved in the way that it did today. It is thinking about this motivation cultivated in the program that on behalf of all of us, we want to acknowledge that none of this would have been possible without our families and loved ones who supported us through all the ups and downs of pursuing our masters, the guidance and encouragement of our amazing faculty, the constant help from all the technicians, the care the staff puts in, a big shout out to Tass who made us smile at the end of every day, and our incredible supervisors who were by our sides, by, by our sides in this process. To you, a big thank you, especially to Bonnie and Sophie. We know it was not easy putting up with the both of us. <laughs> On behalf of both Julia and I, we want to thank our wonderful cohort. It is an absolute honor to graduate alongside each and every one of you today. We would also like to thank all those that started this journey with us, but may be graduating later. You were an integral part of our experience. Can the 2023 Masters of Design and Masters of Fine Arts please stand up? Today, we stand as proud, grad proud graduates of Emily Carr University of Art and Design. We invite you to take in this wonderful moment together with us and recognize all that we have achieved. All the joy, the blood, the sweat, and the tears that have gone into officially becoming masters of our chosen professions. While this day marks the end of this amazing chapter, we hope the lessons learned and relationships we've forged over the past two years will stay with us for the rest of our lives. And now could we get a round of applause for all the lovely people that are standing up. Congratulations, we now have done, done it. it. Now, now let's, let's finally celebrate. I was uh, so caught up in listening to that that I forgot that I was up next. <laughs> the members of the 2023 graduating class will now be presented to the chancellor to be admitted en masse to their degrees. Will the graduands please rise?
By the virtue of the authority vested in me and in the Senate of this university, I hereby admit you to your various degrees. Will the graduates please be seated. The Master of Fine Arts and Master of Design degrees will now be conferred. Our Interim AVP Research and Dean of the Jake Kerr Faculty of Graduate Studies, Justin Langlois, will present the candidates and Mike Caver will read the names of the graduates as they cross the stage. Well, hello, everybody, and congratulations. Uh, my name is Justin Langlois, and Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting the candidates for the degrees of Master of Fine Arts and Masters of Design. For the degree Master of Fine Arts, Hur Ahmed. <laughs> Maru Aponte. Gwyneth Chow. Sidi <laughs> Chen. <laughs> Maria Isabella Rocio Dagnino. Sam Davis. Jimena. KJ Edwards. Jenny Gao. Marion Landry. Yasin Pillay. <laughs> Connie Watts. <laughs> Elliot Oscar White Hill. Sophia Zarders. <laughs> Melanie Beth Kamen. <laughs> Leah Nadir Contracto. <laughs> Julia de Oliveira Barba. Angela Dion. <laughs> Ye Jin Un. Shraddha Kompar. <laughs> Sita Lakshmi Lakshmaman. Wang Rong Li. <laughs> Stephanie Osler. 
Daniela Montserrat Palencia Toa. Isla Pedrana. Amir Salim Rangwala. Nargis Nasir Sheikh. Anai Alanis Aquilar. Yasmin Bakhtiar. Karina Dawn Brewer. Joyce Chung. Sue Im Choi. having our master's students congratulated and degree is conferred. Now we'll move to the undergraduate students, but we have an undergraduate speaker. So I'll ask all the students there, I know it's a, a little bit awkward now to sit back down because we're gonna do this all again. So you can sit. So, so the students who are standing can find their seats again. My apologies for the disruption. Somehow we didn't recognize that in time. So we'll just give everyone a moment to get seated and then we'll bring our undergraduate speaker forward. Students can walk around the front if they need to, just to, to move towards their seats. So I want to thank all the students for their patience, as or, or soon-to-be graduates for their patience as we've navigated that. Um, if you know anything about Emily Carr University of Art and Design, you know we're a very enthusiastic group. So um, we were just a little bit too enthusiastic there. It is now my pleasure to introduce the 2023 undergraduate student speaker, Sophia Suman Mock. Sophia graduates from Emily Carr University with a Bachelor of Media Arts in 3D computer animation. She is a 3D artist from South Korea whose work focuses on achieving photorealistic 3D visuals for feature animation and live action films. Sophia is the director and creator of Documents of Life, a full CG film conveying the beauty of still life objects in which their stains and surface imperfections reveal people's lifestyles and personalities. Sophia has been actively involved in the ECU community 
as a member of the search committee, graduation committee, and as curator for the 3D animation screening for the show 2023. She was a recipient of an Emily Carr University Achievement Scholarship in both 2020 and 2021, and a Christopher Foundation Scholarship and Simon Chang Award in 2022. Chancellor Thomas, I now call upon this year's undergraduate student speaker, Sophia Suman Mock, to address convocation. We did it, everyone! <laughs> okay. Okay. As we gather here today to celebrate, I want to take a moment to reflect on our individual journeys to become who we are today. Each and every one of us has a unique story to tell. From the classes we took to the friends we made to the obstacles we faced. No two journeys have been the same. Therefore, gathered here now, some of us may feel ready to jump into society, while some of us may feel uncertain about what comes next. During these times, it is important to remember that we all grow at our own pace. We can often feel like we're falling behind from our peers, from the high expectations. We can often doubt ourselves on our journey, and that's okay. The paths we walked and the paths we'll take will look different for each of us. So let's embrace our individualities, celebrate our successes, how big or small it may be, and tap ourselves on the back on how far and well we've come. We are embarking on a new start. Whether you dream to change the world or continue to explore a new part of yourself, I and the people gathered here today will support you on your special journey. As we move forward into the future, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the people who have made this opportunity possible for us. Our school administrators, our professors, our friends and our family. They have supported us and encouraged us to be ourselves. Thank you to all that has made us who we are today. Lastly, I want to congratulate my fellow students, uh, graduates now, on this incredible achievement. Congratulations, class of 2023. We've come a long way, but the journey is far from over. Let's carry on and let's make the most of our lives. Thank you. So the Bachelor of Design, Bachelor of Media Arts, and Bachelor of Fine Art degrees will now be conferred. We'll begin with the Bachelor of Design candidates presented by the Dean of the Ian Gillespie Faculty of Design and Dynamic Media, Celeste Martin. We will pause between design, uh, sorry, the uh, design and then we'll, dynamic media, then we'll move to, um, uh, for each degree, we'll, we'll pause in between. So, Celeste? We're gonna get this right this time. <laughs> no, here's fine, Celeste. 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 <laughs> Let's pick it's this one. Mike's going to be back. Okay. We're keeping you on your toes. <laughs> Chancellor, I'm Celeste Martin. I have the honor of presenting the Bachelor of Design degree candidates in communication design, industrial design, and interaction design. As you, know, as you know from your experience at Emily Carr, the creative process can be chaotic. And, uh, and this is an example of life imitating art, so it's pretty appropriate. And uh, we're gonna start again for the major of communication design. It's a time loop. Yeah, Alanis Aguilar Ahani.
Yasmin Bakhtiar. Karina Brewer. Joyce Chung. Choi Suim. Sun Ho Choi. Luisa Coulard Fernandez. <laughs> Lee Din. <laughs> Nicole Lindsay Duff. <laughs> Lucy Fournier. <laughs> Madeline Fraser. Zara Goldney. <laughs> Katie Gu. <laughs> Chase Hansen. <laughs> Zara Imran Hassan. <laughs> Shun Huang. Kashish Huku Jani. <laughs> Stephanie Ip Hu Tang. <laughs> Jocelyn Yunji Kim. <laughs> Jin Yo Kwan. <laughs> Jin Ho Lee. Yerin Lee. Rita Lee. Zhi He Liang. Joy Liu. Faye Marwick. Hey, uh, Haley Ng. Clara Ingi. Tao Nguyen. Airi Nishioka. Chan Ho Park. Valeria Paz Garcia. <laughs> Alisa Ribeiro. <laughs> Ivan Sok. Cameron Sproul. Kai, uh, uh, sorry, Kaya Tanskinen. Kaya Tanskinen. Got it. Tran Huang Tian An. Eric Tuffle. Tuttle. Cheryl Wong. Rowan Wright. Sierra Wright. Jia Hui Shu. Owen Shu. Zi Yin. Q 
Shi Zhang. Shi Zhang. Ivan Yu Tong Zhao. And now for the major industrial design. Aksa Elizabeth Abraham. Lena Balderas. Darren Bennett. Layla Berg. Alicia Palinda Putri Calvin. Jun Han Cho. Bianca Del Rio Codato. Carla Erasmus. Cody Fleming Powell. Robert uh, Robert Martin Fraser. Calissa Faith Gagnon. Cheryl Han. Caden Howe. Annika Hoke. Yosaman Hurfar. Yosaman Hurfar. Xuan Pu Huang. Yon Luka Janssen. Kamil Kaptan. Daisy Kim. Paulina Krilikowski. Edwina Liao. Vivia Dehua Liu. Uh, Eamon Makasak. <laughs> Ella Ma. <laughs> Nadia Ma 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 Marlia Mahamur. <laughs> Bennett Molnar. Clyde Montgomery. Danielle Morrison. Aisha Ayman Natsution. Lacey O'Neill. Jing Yang O. Oh. <laughs> Fam Trong Jiang. <laughs> Jaya Krishna Selvaraj. <laughs> Nolan Talbot Kelly. <laughs> Bo Xiao Xiao Wing, Icy. Heather Woolley. Lan Yang. Yu Jin Ran, aka Keenan.
you shall not. Elliot Ziller. <laughs> Joseph Zhu. <laughs> Megan Zeith. <laughs> Eden Zinchir. Uh, Eden Zinchir. And now for the major interaction design. Nikash Bahel. Zeynep Bozdeya. Chelsea Burke. Lillian Zhao Tong Chin. <laughs> Jay Wan Choi. <laughs> Myung Eun Chung. <laughs> Pablo Esquivel. Leonardo Julian Felix Giordani. Tanisha Gupta. Jessica Huang. Uh, Cecilia Hubinet. Amber Johnstone. <laughs> Uni Ju. Adam Kim. Sarah Yoon Soo Kim. He Soo Ko. Braden Law. Peggy Lee. Leanne Jiayi Liu. Yejun Liu. Yi Liu. Nelly Murphy. <laughs> Oliver J. Peril Winkler. <laughs> Anushka Sharma. <laughs> Felicia Audrey Sugiarta. Xu Yue Wang. Michael Wong. Wilson Yuan. Nancy Ching Zhu. I now call forward graduates for the degree Bachelor of Media Arts for the major 2D and experimental animation. <laughs> Angela Almero. <laughs> Anya Roque Amarillo. Cleo Borgford. Yeah. 
Christy Chan. Andrea Chiang. Adrian Luis Rabin, uh, Rabin Desiderio, Desiderio, sorry, Desiderio. <laughs> Selena Alokina Doubleday. Alisa? Alisa Claire Duro. Leah Fabre Dimsdale. <laughs> Xinglin Gao. <laughs> Kurt Gonzaga. <laughs> Emily Cow. <laughs> Cameron Kletke. Christine Lee. Amanda Lim. Brittany Ma. Kasha Ray Malinowski. Bailey Martin. Emma McKay. Mia Milardo. Maya Sigal Patrice. Katrina Pleasance. Pedro Ramos Ferretti. Christina Salschenberger. Shre oh, yeah. Shresha Sashank. Zoe Simmons. Chu Wei Wei Wu. Monica Yip. Ting Yi Zhang. And now for the major of 3D computer animation. Bernardo Sebastian Damian Aguilar. <laughs> Madeline Duval Tyler. <laughs> Tong Fu. <laughs> Joyce Gu. <laughs> Elizabeth Lepis Hills. Jingya Huang. Thomas Huang. Mariela Haume. Kevin Jeon Hee Lee. Lee Yun Kin. Yun Shin. Manly Liu. <laughs> Sophia Sumin Mok. <laughs> Anna, 
Andy Shin. Wang Tianyu. Karina Wang. Xia San Ning. Marissa Shu. Yu Qi Yin. Linkster Zheng. Yashi Zeng. For, and now for the major film and screen arts. Cameron James Bancy. Patricio Alonso Cartes Lopez. Sherry Chan. Hannah Chang. Meng Ni Chen. Si Chen. Pablo Garcia Garcia. Karina Goulet. Pedro Enrique Hernandez Mangalets. Mandy Hoyman Hoyn. Gabe Kwok. Kide Leitao. Jennifer Lee. Thomas Mai. Justin Mao. Matthew McCormick. Emma Shang. Shinro Takada. Maria Jose Velez. Yi Chen Yao. Bachelor of Media Arts in New Media and Sound Art, and the Bachelor of Fine Arts degrees in Illustration, Photography, and Visual Arts will now be conferred. Our Dean of the Audain Faculty of Art, Kyla Mallet, will present the candidates. Woo! Hello, everyone. I'm Kyla Mallet. I'm the Dean of the Faculty of Art. Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting the Bachelor of Media Arts degree candidates in New Media and Sound Art, and the Bachelor of Fine Arts degree candidates in Illustration, Photography, and Visual Arts. For the major New Media and Sound Art, Mac Burgess. Amba Chavis. <laughs> Elaine Fu. <laughs> Nan.
南河海里乐。Kira Madsen, Linda Serrano, Sam Street, Alyssa Tabrina. And now for the major illustration. Joaquin Antonio Panasigi Acuna. Emily Ann. Christopher Carter Ashdown. Esther Belfontaine, Elijah Bisco, Audrey Boy, Matthew Bowie. Sue Ah Cho, Kristen Chow, Haley Claire, Si Roy, uh, so Si Roy Dong. Emily Faccaro. Ching <laughs> Gan. Hidenori Makino Goto. <laughs> Chloe Lee Groth. Ash Warren, <laughs> Alyssa Haig, Kendra Lynn here, Min An Huang, Zi <laughs> Yu Huang. Sion Join, Jung, Sion Jung. Can't read my own writing. Charlotte Lau, <laughs> Lindsay Lampa, <laughs> Ija Liu. Amy Longo, Jenny Z Jun Lo, Taylor McClement, Natalia Morillo Guelas. My Ban Nguyen. Aretha Pereira. Pereira. Anna Catherine Pothicary. Timothy Saxono. Ishika Kaur Sandu. 
Aaron Scobie. Angie Soberanis. Natasha Tatiana Sterling. Miranda Lay. Athena Wang. Chen Yi Wong. Brianna Wong. Henry Xu. Puer Xu. Xin Yu Zhang. Yu Wei Zhang. And now for the major photography. David Aquino. Vanessa Denham. Duncan Alexander Fitch. Kim Mata Hipol. Hipol. Jordan Robertson. Gibson Switzer. Sky Tao. And now for the major visual arts. Orly Ashkenazi. Dana Justin Belcourt. Diane Blunt. Chen Chen Xuan. Jenny Shao Ching Chen. Brian Choi. Clarissa Aaron Chupik. Grace Connor. Diego Cruz Coronato. Katie DeJong. Riz Yingfa de Sandoli. De Sandoli. Novalin Dis, uh, Digastini. Uh, Rika Dunik. Talon Ellison. Alice Fay. Claudia Patricia Fernandez Garza. Maya Isabel Flory. Mu Xuan Gao. Aya Celine Ur Ursulo Gonzalez. Jane Brocott. Miranda Guo.
Ji Yong Li Le Han. Ashley Hick. Si Yi Huang. Nicole Angeline Johnston. Shiva Khaif Pana. Zihu Kim. Naomi Shane Fernandez. Xing Yin Lao. Jae Kyung Lee. Shi Ling Lee. Yan Xiao Lee. Liang Yan. <laughs> Jessica Liu. <laughs> Miho Leah McLaughlin. <laughs> Azade Mehriar. Cameron Monsef. <laughs> Megan Murray. <laughs> Sho Hui Nam. <laughs> Raquel Ama. Pei Shun Sun. Layla Ross. Gabriel Enrique Sainz. Jade Sawatton. Taylor Sherstone. Kelsey Steves. Avanlaya Therian. Avanlaya Therian. Uh, Maya Talion Tiersch. Tiersch. Alyssa Lemus Thompson. Kimberly Tucker. Damara Grace Vogue. Ryan Wong. James Keegan White. January Wolodarski. Tong Wu. Chi Chin. Chi Chin. Chi Jun Zhang.
Bo Jing. Conferred. Our Interim Dean of the Faculty of Culture and Community, Dian Akjari, will present the candidates. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dian Akjari, the Interim Dean of the Faculty of Culture and Community. Chancellor, I have the honor of presenting the Bachelor of Fine Art degree candidates in critical and cultural practices. For the major critical and cultural practices, Kelsey Brill Funk. <laughs> Caitlin Irwin. <laughs> Malavia Kondakar. Kondakar. Steph Schneider. amazing. This concludes the formal awarding of degrees. Some candidates recommended by the Senate for degrees today are unable to be present and their names have therefore not been called. I'd now admit them to the appropriate degrees as shown in the program. Will the graduating class please rise. I congratulate <laughs> Awesome. I congratulate each and every one of you on the completion of your degree. This is truly an impressive achievement. I would now like to ask your family, friends, and everyone assembled here to join me in a round of applause, which we've already done, but we can do it again, for the graduating class of 2023. I invite you, the members of the graduating class, to reciprocate by applauding your family, friends, faculty, and staff, and all those who helped you reach this goal. <laughs> I appreciate the gratitude. Uh, graduates, please be seated. I would now like to call on the chair of Emily Carr University's Board of Governors, Don Iveson, to deliver closing remarks. Chancellor Thomas and President Siddle, honored guests and graduates. This is my uh, first opportunity to actually speak to the Emily Carr community, having only recently been appointed as the board chair of this institution. 
And I hope all of you here today have enjoyed this ceremony as much as I have. It's a little different for me because in my day job, I'm the chief executive officer of the Law Society of British Columbia. And my favorite part of that job is the call ceremonies for new lawyers that are about to join the legal profession. It is a very subdued, <laughs> very serious operation. So it usually begins with me issuing a stern warning that there will be no clapping, <laughs> there will be no cheering, and I usually add to that that if that happens during the course of the ceremony, it could lead to proceedings in contempt or the possibility of disbarment. <clears throat> I have to say I like this so much better. This has been absolutely <laughs> delightful. And it's impossible while you're sitting here not to pick up the enthusiasm, uh, the extraordinary enthusiasm from faculty, from staff, and all of those who have supported you along your way. Uh, it's also interesting for me because I was sitting there thinking it was almost 26 years ago exactly uh, that I made my first visit to MLA Carr. And I remember it fondly. I took advantage of the opportunity to come back on a number of occasions uh, over the course of the years. At, at, at that first visit, I'd only been recently appointed as the Deputy Minister of Education and Advanced Education, and I didn't think you could really do that job well unless you spent a lot of time out at the institutions in the company of the members of the professoriate and the student population. For me, the first visit and every subsequent visit uh, to Emily Carr was something that I deeply cherish because this institution is one that exists in a category of only one, a national leader, a world leader in art and design. And uh, I can say to all of you that when I was asked to consider whether I would join uh, the board of Emily Carr, it took all of about two seconds and possibly less to say, yes, I welcome the opportunity to be a member of the community and to do my part to advance the, the interests of the institution and all of those who learn within it. Now, graduates, you're a class that has been defined by resilience, by adaptability, and perseverance. Students in the class of 2023 completed their studies either partly and in some cases entirely during the uncertainty of the pandemic. You succeeded despite a generational challenge, indeed a challenge that had not really been experienced by the world population for a hundred years. You exceeded every expectation. You fulfilled the promise of your potential and you're only beginning your journey in doing so much more on that front. Many are graduating having already won awards or industry recognition for their work, demonstrated commitment to your values by consistently aligning your practices with your vision for a better world. There's been a commitment to equity and to justice in your community and beyond, both in the present tense and also for the future. Students have advocated tirelessly for conservation and sustainability initiatives, have contributed to major exhibitions throughout British Columbia and beyond, have landed major public and private commissions to create artworks, design solutions, and learning resources even prior to your graduation. These students have also contributed to Emily Carr's future uh, through their input to the strategic plan and have already contributed in countless ways to overcoming the entrenched problems in communities across the problem, province. You've made meaningful differences in the lives of your neighbors, your colleagues, and your fellow students, and it's a journey that's only beginning. You've heard this today from some of those who've been recognized through the Emily Carr Award and the honorary uh, doctorates about the promise of future careers and the contributions that can come through the time that you have spent as part of or associated with this community. Congratulations again on your achievements and uh, every success in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Don. This brings to a close today's convocation ceremony. You're all invited to attend the graduation exhi exhibition at the Emily Carr campus located on Great Northern Way. 
On behalf of the entire Emily Carr University of Art and Design community and the many honored guests who have joined us here today, I would like to thank you for coming and wish you a wonderful rest of your afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. If you could please stand as the platform party leaves, leaves the auditorium.
Yeah, um, I have a, uh, I don't think Charlie's 